If there's one topic out there that woodworkers just can't seem to agree on, I think it would be sharpening. And there are hundreds of products out there that help you go from dull to sharp pretty quickly. Here's another one. The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Typebond. It's disclosure time. Empower has advertised with us in the past. I did not request this item, but it showed up at my house. Empower was interested in running another ad campaign, but I decided to turn it down in favor of doing the most unbiased review that I could free from financial influence. Yes, I realize this gives them free advertising anyway. Never said I was a good businessman, but I get more gratification from presenting fair and honest reviews than I do from getting a few bucks from a sponsor. So let's get it on. So it's pretty clear that Empower is really trying to be a one-stop shop, your entire sharpening solution here all in one unit. And the carrying case, while I don't need a carrying case, it's not like I'm commuting with my sharpening gear, maybe you will. Maybe you're like Roy Underhill and you walk through the city with a toolbox. <laughs> Having a place for everything, and this this is all your sharpening stuff. I mean, outside of maybe a honing guide, which you could probably fit in here too. This is actually kind of nice to have everything contained like this. So let's crack it open. Okay, inside the main compartment here, that's the sharpening station itself. And in our little pooch, looks like we have some waxy sharpening compounds here, a little piece of gum, and uh, some spray schmutz. It's like when you open an envelope on your birthday. You just gotta double check that there's no 20s in there. So here's the primary system. You've got these covers on top that are actually uh, leather or a leather-like material. Um, that's for the fine honing, which you would then use these guys on each one, but that's a later step in the process. Underneath here, check it out. Got some really beautiful sort of topographical patterned sharpening stones. These are diamond sharpening stones. And it looks like we have a 300, 600, and 1200 grit. This material here, because I'm lazy, you ever do that? You could just do the little Ziploc thing, but instead you just tear it open. So this is their sharpening solution. You're gonna spray this on here as a lubricant when you do your sharpening. And as I understand it, these plates are actually replaceable. Who knows how long it would take. Diamond stones last a long time. But if you needed to ever replace this, as I understand it, you should be able to, probably with some effort, pop these off and put a new one on without having to order an entire new plate system here, this whole station, which is pretty cool. Now the Empower station costs about $199 and I wanted to compare it to what I currently use. So I've got a low grit diamond stone, it's two-sided, but I use this not only for corrective things when I need to remove a lot of material, but I also use it to flatten my stones, which is something you need to do if you're using water stones. These are not traditional water stones, they are Shapton ceramic stones, last a long time, uh, really, really good, I like them a lot. Uh, 1,000, 5,000, 8,000, and then I have a, you know, for that fine honing, I've got a leather strop and some honing compound. So when I add all this together, it's about $276. Now I realize it's not even a fair one-to-one -one comparison, but this is what I use, right? So if the Empower can replace all of that, I kind of want to get an idea of what that cost difference is, and is there any savings for going with something like the Empower system? So now, let's, uh, let's go ahead and sharpen some stuff, see how it works. Now this isn't really a sharpening tutorial, right? So I'm not gonna go through 100% all of the detail, but here's the chisel I'm starting with. This is, yes, believe it or not, this is an Amazon Basics chisel. It's not great, but it's fine. <laughs> it's just fine. So we are going to sharpen this up as best we can. Now you could probably see that I've already done some lapping on it. This thing is fairly sharp to begin with, but we're gonna repeat the process as if this were a new chisel, which means flattening the back and then honing that bevel. And of course, we're gonna start with our lowest grit and work our way up. Whenever you don't see an ingredients list, <laughs> at least for me. I wanna know what the heck is in this thing, especially if I have to buy more of this. I don't necessarily wanna be beholden to them. I, I would like to find something else. Well, with diamond stones, I do know people will either use water or Windex. There are other solutions that will work, but I don't know, maybe this, maybe this just works better. Now, while I'm sure this stuff is safe to touch, I'm gonna to wear gloves. I don't like touching things that I don't know what the composition is, so gloves it is. First thing we're gonna do is start lapping along the bottom of the chisel, and um, in case you haven't done this process before, you never really need to do the entire chisel back, just the portions that are going to come in contact with the work. And for me, that's usually about an inch back. That feels pretty good. Diamond stones generally have a little bit of a break-in period where they feel a little bit grittier and they catch a little bit more. But as you use them, they kind of smooth out to their, you know, whatever their intended grit level is. All right, see how we did there. 
But because I know this was already flat, uh, this is not a surprise, but I see a nice even scratch pattern across the whole surface. I'd feel comfortable moving to the next grit. And maybe you've already seen the problem, the problem that I see right now. You can't really address the side of the stone the way you would normally want to. Um, when doing this kind of lapping, you want as much contact with the stone as possible for the most efficient uh, body movement possible. And unfortunately, when I go to 600 grit, I really have no choice but to use the short end here, which is not ideal. I mean, I'm sure it'll work, but watch how short your strokes are when you do this. So it's not a deal breaker, but I find it a whole lot easier and fun if I can address the entire length of a sharpening stone. And what we're essentially doing now is replacing the previous scratch pattern with the new 600 grit pattern. It's probably good enough. And let's go to the 1200. All right, that's looking pretty good. Nice even scratch pattern. I'm not really gonna take this to the honing plates. Um, if I have stones that go higher than this 1200, sure, I would use those, but I don't really wanna flatten the back on the straps. I mean, I guess you could, but it just seems like something that could wind up gouging them. So I think we'll just stop here. Now we can move to uh, sharpening the bevel. Now I happen to be a honing guide fan. You could certainly go freehand if that's your thing. Let's start with the lowest grit. Kind of hard to tell what's what here, so just a, a quick tip for you. Get a Sharpie marker, draw a couple lines, scribble on there, and this way you could use that to gauge your progress. Okay, so I did cheat a little bit to get the whole bevel redone. I've got a very low grit diamond stone that I use for resetting bevels. Could have done it here, but why spend all that time if I have this stone? Understand that this is not necessarily gonna be the best grit if you're trying to reset a bevel. So now I will use the 300 to catch up to where we were before. It's looking pretty good. So now we'll jump to 600 grit. Now you might notice the surface is pretty wet. I'm not just using the lubricant that they provide. When you give me such a small bottle and this is like specialized stuff, I just, it feels like it's too precious to use liberally. So I've just been kind of cutting it with water. It works just fine. Maybe it's not optimal as going full strength, but it seems to be working okay. It's looking good. We're getting there. And jump to the 1200. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now at this point, when you sharpen a bevel, you usually end up with that little wire edge, a little burr on the other side. So with it still in, in my honing guide, I'm just going to rub the flat on that 1200 just to remove the wire edge. Now I'm gonna to link to a couple of sharpening videos I've done in the past if you want more information about the sharpening process. And now we could start with the stropping. So on the side, you've got a little cheater <laughs> message there. You use the orange wax, which is equivalent to 1800 grit. This guy's blue, 5,000. Oops, I got those wrong. White, 2,500, and then blue is 5,000. But that's pretty nice in case you forget. All right, so we're just gonna color it in, a little scribble. Start with the orange. Now, notice when you are stropping, it's a real good idea to just pull. Okay, if we went forward, this is a soft material, especially when we get to the softest one, you got a real good chance of gouging that material. So we're just gonna go on the pull stroke here. Yeah, it's looking pretty all right. A couple more for good luck and a pinch to grow an inch. <laughs> my mom used to wake me up on my birthday, give me my birthday smacks on the butt. I don't know, it's weird, but that's what she used to do. And then she'd say, one more for good luck, and then pinch me 
and say a pinch to grow an inch. Now one thing to watch out for when you're using a honing guide like this, my honing guide is picking up some of the compound here. You know, freehand is not that hard, and especially if you're just doing the stropping freehanded, uh, it's not that difficult to do. Probably should just abandon the honing guide, but I wanna see it through at this point. And stropping, truthfully, is just meant to be like quick and dirty. On the leather, a couple passes, and you're done. Ooh, it's looking nice. Let's see what we have here. That's looking pretty good. I mean, even with this inexpensive material on an inexpensive chisel, we almost have a mirror reflection there. You don't need a mirror polish. I mean, looks are cool. It's nice to see that. But in the end, it's, it's how it cuts that makes the difference. So uh, let's take a test cut. So got ourselves a little chunk of walnut here. Let's go across, make a bit of a chamfer. Ooh. That's nice. Just kind of peeling it off. Nice and smooth. That is a chisel I would be more than happy to cut some dovetails with. I mean, maybe not this giant fat chisel, but you know what I mean. That is sharp enough for the work that I do. Looking good. All right, so I just showed you the whole process with a chisel going through flattening the back and everything. When I use my regular chisels, I actually employ a micro bevel. So you might be able to see at the very tip, that's actually the only thing I'm really sharpening. Um, and that's all you need to do. So when it comes time to refresh this chisel, unless it's a major issue where it's super dull or damaged, I really won't even be going to the diamond plates. So I think it would be kind of nice to have these just set up and ready to go. So all you have to do is pop it into a guide or again, go freehand and just a couple passes on each. And just like that, this scalpel is ready for surgery. Okay, so overall, uh, the system works as it's intended, as advertised. I really like the idea of having these three plates as strops ready to go. Uh, unfortunately, even though I do have a strop and I do have honing compound, I don't often do that. Like a lot of times I'll just do all my sharpening at once, I'll get my highest grit stone and stop there. But in reality, if you are working through a, an operation that just requires your chisel to be dead sharp and you keep using it so it keeps getting dull, you really want something like this next to you at the bench so you can just take a couple passes here and there. There's no reason to use a dull tool and having a strop is a good way to prevent that from happening. So having this as a setup ready to go just off to the side, I think is actually really appealing. I like that aspect. I still have my one concern about when you're using the diamond plates and you are working on the flat back of a chisel, it's a little harder to get to. That's not ideal, but technically you could either skip that grit or just use the short end of the stone. So I do think it's a pretty good value at this price at $199 compared to other options. Uh, I do think it's pretty good. My concerns with something like this are being stuck with the, the company for um, consumables, right? So if you specifically want to use their honing compounds, you got to buy it from them. If you want to use their honing fluid or whatever they call this, lapping fluid, um, of course, you got to get that stuff from them. Now, the prices are pretty reasonable, but we all know there are alternative ways uh, to do these things. You could find other lapping solutions. A lot of people, like I said before, a lot of people use Windex. Uh, and certainly honing compounds, you can get all kinds of honing compounds and they would probably work just as well here. So if you're in the market for a new sharpening system and you're not I think the key here is if you're not already going down the path, like let's say you bought one or two water stones that you're happy with, but you're just not totally sure about it. Unless you're down that path far enough already, you don't wanna necessarily switch to something else, but this is a pretty good cost-effective way to kind of have all your bases covered with the exception of that lower, lower grit, but you can use sandpaper for those times or a grinder, right? Of course, you can use a grinder to reset a bevel and then jump here for the rest of your work. So it's not gonna be the right choice for everybody, but it certainly does what the manufacturer says it's supposed to do and uh, does it pretty well too. There you go. Happy sharpening, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Well, if you stuck around this long to the end of the video, I've got a special reward for you. 
A lot of times when I receive products like this for review and I don't actually need them or want them, I will give them away and that's what we're gonna do. Just to be clear, it's a great sharpening system. I don't think it's enough to displace what I currently use. I'm very well invested in my shaft and stone setup and I like it a lot, but I do think this is going to serve someone very, very well. So we're gonna do a little giveaway. And the only way I can think to do it is to give you guys like a phrase that you can use uh, to leave a comment and then I will pick from those people a few days later. So the phrase that you're gonna have to include with your comment, not just the phrase, leave a comment and then use the phrase and that's how I know that you're uh, interested in winning this. You wanna say, uh, diamonds are a boy's best friend. All right, add that to your comment and I will pick a winner and hopefully it'll be you. All right, thanks for watching everybody. See you next time. If there's one thing in woodwork, if there's one topic in woodworking that, if there's one topic that woodworkers just can't seem to agree on, mm -hmm. if there's one topic that, I'll get this. I have no one to blame but myself.